was sick and tired Living in a town filled with narrow minds and hate They used to laugh at me Their children called me Hello, 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 and thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. I am Claudine Jackson. I am your host reminding you and me that in these trying times, we have to be the ones to give comfort. We can't look for comfort from our leaders, at least not yet. We don't know what, what's going to unfold in the future. But right now, we can do better than our leaders at giving giving ourselves comfort and giving each other comfort and if you can't give comfort don't give discomfort I want to thank people for tuning in to WHPR thank you so much for tuning in to a spoonful of comfort thank you for the privilege of your time it's my pleasure and honor to be able to speak to you every Tuesday and uh, thank you for tuning in. I also want to thank people who donate to the Purvis Jackson Autism Foundation. The Purvis Jackson Autism Foundation is named after my husband and my son, Purvis Jackson, to uh, help lower income children with handicaps. Now, everybody uh, with handicaps needs help, but lower income people with handicaps really need help. Uh, wealthy people don't need the Purvis Foundation. They can take care of their children themselves. They can provide all the services that they need for their children. But when you're lower income, my son is 44, still handicapped by autism. He cannot read, write, or talk, or live independently. So I have been through both stages. I've been through the lower income with the child with a handicap that needed help. And then I've been through the more fortunate who could offer help. And um, doesn't God want those of us who are more fortunate to help the less fortunate? So I thank you people who have donated to the Purvis Foundation. I thank you people who can find it in your heart to look out for the less fortunate. I'm wearing red today for the National Heart Association because this is Heart Health Month and they want us to uh, remind everyone about heart health, and that's uh, very important. Now, uh, some of the things that we need to do to make sure that our heart is healthy and stays healthy, I can't say I've always done it. I can't say that I'm doing everything right now, but it's good to know what you should do. So uh, what we should do is eat more fruits and vegetables, check our nutrition. I'm guilty. I need to eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, that's one of the things I'm guilty of. But when I uh, reached the age of what, 50 or 60 and uh, high blood pressure and diabetes and arthritis and things started setting in, I became more aware of my own health. So be aware of what you do for your body that's healthy and be aware of what you do that's not healthy. You need to have, uh, eat more fruits and vegetables, drink more water. The more water that you drink, you're washing out the sodium. If you have too much sodium or too many impurities, if you're drinking a lot of water, it's washing them out. Exercise. Stay active. Now, my exercise of choice is yoga, and it has been very good for me. Um, doing yoga, I haven't been uh, as active with doing yoga lately as I used to, but it's, it's one of the things that I know needs to, uh, that is good for me, for my physical health. So you realize what is good for you for your physical health and watch your weight. And if you eat more fruits and vegetables, your weight will probably uh, do better anyhow because uh, you don't want to have to always be on a diet. But if you change your eating habits, which is something I had to do, I changed my eating habits, and I don't want to tell you 
ask that I'm doing everything the way I should do for heart health. But I'm aware of it. I have improved. And the things that are good for your heart are also good for your brain. Your heart health helps brain health. And, uh, you know, a lot of people my age have dementia and Alzheimer's. Uh, the experts say that Alzheimer's doesn't come on suddenly, that it starts in your brain maybe 20 years before it manifests in your actions. So if you are taking good care of your heart, you're also taking good care of your brain. So remember, February is heart month, heart health month. So try to um, do something for your own heart health. February is also Valentine's Day, which is uh, coming up this weekend. So I was wearing red for the heart health. I'm also wearing red for Valentine's Day. Now, Valentine's Day is coming up uh, this weekend. And I was blessed to have a husband that I was very romantic for Valentine's Day. He gave me flowers and candy and jewelry. Uh, he didn't let a special day go by without trying to let me know how special I was. So I got, I've had flowers, I've had everything that you could want for romance, I've had. But I, I remember one uh, incident, and it wasn't Valentine's Day. It was Sweetest Day. Purvis and I hadn't been uh, married that long. And he was going to have to leave town for Sweetest Day. And I was s telling him, I'm going to have to spend Sweetest Day without you. I hate for you to be gone on Sweetest Day. And, you know, I was a little upset because back then I was so uh, madly in love that whenever he was gone, and he's an entertainer, so he was gone a lot, but he used to say, well, you knew that I'd be traveling a lot when you married me. I say, yeah, that's true. So he left town. It's sweetest day. I'm saying, well, I. He's right. I knew he was an entertainer when I married him. So, I get a candy gram from Western Union. I get flowers and candy, and he had a message saying, "I'm sorry to be leaving you on sweetest day. Um, I really." I uh, wish I could be with you. And I thought, oh, this is so nice. Uh, you know, I was in this glow. He, he's missing me on Sweetest Day. He sent me candy and, and flowers. And I was uh, feeling really good. So that would be great if that were the end of the story. But about two months later, I received a bill that uh, the candy gram had not been paid for. Not only that, he had sent out six other candy grams. <laughs> so there I was basking in the glow of all this romance and come to find out he'd sent out six other candy grams. And I was the one that had to write the check to pay for them. So, so much for the, that romantic story. But he was, uh, very good and very thoughtful at making sure that I had, um, making sure that no special day passed by that he didn't acknowledge it. So I've talked about Heart Health Day, I've talked about Valentine's Day, and if you are alone on Valentine's Day, do something nice for yourself. You don't have to wait for someone to buy you candy or flowers or take you out to dinner. You can do whatever you feel like you want to do for yourself. And I remember when I learned that lesson, it was one birthday and, and, when I was a young mother. And on my birthday, no one had called to wish me happy birthday. No one had um, bought me anything for my birthday. So. At the end of the evening, I was feeling bad. I said, everybody forgot my birthday. And then I thought, well, I know it's my birthday. I didn't forget it. 
So tomorrow, I'm going to go buy myself a gift, which is what I did. I went and bought myself a birthday gift. So when these special days come around, I've had it both ways. I've had it where I got a lot of attention, and then I've had it where it seemed like everybody forgot me. But you can buy yourself a birthday present. You can buy yourself uh, a Valentine present. You don't have to wait for other folks. And you don't have to feel sorry for yourself because if your income is low, then you can buy yourself a low income uh, birthday gift or Valentine's gift. So February is also Black History Month. And during Black History Month, I want to um, talk about Motown. But before I, I start talking about Motown, I want to remind you about my new book of poems that's coming out. It's called The Butterfly. It'll be out. Uh, soon, I'm having book signings the end of March and the end of April, last Sunday in March and last Sunday in April. And The Butterfly is a book of poems. And this is my fourth book, but this is my first book that I've written that I think there's something in it for everybody. I think you will like this book, and uh, you'll, you'll let me know if you don't. But I really believe that you will like this book. And... Uh, even for people who don't like to read, this book will be uh, good for you because you only um, have to spend a couple of minutes, read one poem a day, whatever. It won't be, this book won't be uh, a stress for you. Everything that, when I say a spoonful of comfort, that's kind of my theme, a spoonful of comfort, because everybody... Uh, Everybody has a spoonful of comfort. You might not be able to give a lot of comfort, but everybody can give a spoonful of comfort. So I want to talk some more about Motown history. Now, the Spinners started, uh, they started at tri -Fi. Then they went to Motown. But the, the, the Spinners, all the writers at Motown, I mentioned, you know, we know a lot of the... Um, we know a lot of the Motown singers, but we don't give credit, I feel, enough to the writers, the people that do all, did all the writing for Motown. We had um, Ivy Hunter, who you don't hear about that much. Ivy Hunter, Ashford and Simpson, um, Holland Dozier Holland. You hear a lot about Holland Dozier Holland. Ashford and Simpson, Holland Dozier Holland, Norman Whitfield, Johnny Bristol, a lot of the riser, the a lot of Paul Riser, a lot of the writers from Motown who you know the song but you don't know their name. But I'm going to take a short break, and when I uh, come back after break, I'm going to share with you some of the Motown lyrics that were so beautiful that might have gotten lost in the music. So uh, thank you for for sticking with me and I'll be back in a minute. Yes. You gotta hug them, then you kiss them. You gotta love them, then you miss them. Whoa. That's what girls are made for. Thank you so much for sticking with me for a spoonful of comfort. You just heard That's What Girls Are Made For by the Spinners, which was one of their first hits at Motown in the early 60s. Speaking of Motown history, so the Spinners are part of Motown history. That was their first hit back in the 60s. 
early 60s. And uh, I used to tell Purvis when we, we were having marital problems, I'd say, if you listen, if you play That's What Girls Are Made For and you listen to the words to that song, we wouldn't have any problems. But uh, that was one of the romantic love songs of the 60s. And there are some other romantic love songs of the 60s. There's one uh, that goes even before Motown. It was by a group called the Drifters, and the Drifters had hits under the boardwalk, um, up on the roof. But I will this this particular hit by the Drifters was called "It's M This Magic Moment." Now, the Drifters weren't with Motown, but b because it's Valentine's Day, it's a romantic song. It was called "This Magic Moment." This magic moment, so different and so new, was like any other until I met you. And then it happened. You took me by surprise. I could see that you felt it too by the look in your eyes. Sweeter than wine, softer than a summer night. Baby, I want to hold you tight. Now those are the kind of lyrics that had the spinners, uh, that influenced the spinners. So talking about the, um, the lyrics from the Motown singers, I want to share with you one of my favorite songs, one of my favorite lyrics, and it's by Smokey Robinson. Because I was telling you the people that wrote for Motown, Ivy Hunter, Holland Dozier Holland, Johnny Bristol, Norman Whitfield, Ashford and Simpson, Sylvia Moy, Janie Bradford, Paul Reiser. These are some of the writers that may have gotten lost in the shuffle of the entertainers, but the entertainers were singing their songs. Janie Bradford and Barry Gordy wrote Money. Uh, the best things in life are free, but you can give it to the birds and bees. I want money. Your love gives me such a thrill, but your love don't pay my bills. I need money. That was one of the first hits at Motown that help launch Motown and that song was written by Barry Gordy and Janie Bradford and it was sung by uh, Barrett Strong so it was a big hit but what I want to I want to share Smokey's song that I love the words to this song and it shows you the talent of the writers at Motown this is called shop around just because you've become a young man now there are some things that you don't understand now. Before you ask some girl for her hand now, keep your freedom for as long as you can now. My mama told me, you better shop around. There are some things that I want you to know now. Just as sure as the wind's going to blow now, women come and the women going to go now before you tell them that you love them so now. My mama told me, you better shop around. Try to get yourself a bargain, son. Don't be sold on the very first one. A pretty girl can come a dime a dozen, so try to find one who's going to give you true loving. Before you take a girl and say, I do now, make sure she's in love with you now. Make sure that her love is true now. I hate to see you feeling sad and blue now. My mama told me, you better shop around. Now, of course, I couldn't do it the justice that Smokey did singing it, but you may have heard the song before. It was a big hit back in the 60s. You may have heard the song, but I don't know if you realize his writing talent in writing the words to shop around. Uh, another Smokey song that I love the lyrics to, is tracks of my tears. People say I'm the life of the party because I have a joke or two. But although I might be laughing loud and hearty, deep inside I'm blue. So take a good look at my face. You'll see the smile looks out of place. If you look closer, it's easy to trace the tracks of my tears. Smokey Robinson was one of, one of the greatest writers of all time. He wrote songs that have endured down through the years and will continue to endure. Another writer who I want to share with you, uh, his words are Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser was a writer at Motown and you don't hear from him, you don't hear his name that much. 
he wrote What Becomes of the Broken Hearted. And What Becomes of the Broken Hearted is a sad song, but it was a million seller. So that means a lot of people felt that way. What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, who have love that's now departed. I know I've got to find some kind of peace of mind. Help me, please. I walk through shadows searching for night, cold and alone, no comfort in sight, hoping and praying for someone to care, always moving and going nowhere. I searching though I don't succeed, for someone's love there's a growing need, always moving and going nowhere, um, all hope is lost, there's no place for beginning, all that's left is an unhappy ending. What becomes of the brokenhearted? That is a sad song, you know, searching though I don't succeed. For someone's love, there's a growing need. All hope is lost, there's no place for beginning. All that's left is an unhappy ending. That song was a sad song that I loved, and I played it a lot, and other people played it a lot, and it was a big, big seller. So, um, broken hearted. I don't think you get through life without going through a broken hearted uh, period. But the thing about being broken hearted is that your heart heals. Uh, another, uh, some other lyrics I wanted to, to share with you is um, uh, the, the temptations. Everybody knows about the temptations, but did you listen, really listen to the temptations lyrics? They had a song called, The Way You Do the Things You Do. You got a smile so bright, you know it could have been a candle. I'm holding you so tight, you know you could have been a handle. The way you swept me off my feet, you know you could have been a broom. And you, baby, you smell so sweet that you know you could have been a perfume. Well, you could have been anything that you wanted to, and I can tell the way you do the things you do. I'm not doing them justice. I'm not trying to sing them to you, but I'm just trying to get you to hear the lyrics. Also, another Temptations uh, lyric that was great. My girl, I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? Well, it's my girl. My girl. Now, every lady, those are the words that you want to hear. Those are our, our words that you want to hear. Now, one of the Spinner songs, and this wasn't when they were with Motown, is uh, I'll Be Around. Whenever you call me, I'll be there. Whenever you want me, I'll be there. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. I'll be around. Those are words that, that ladies love to hear. I say back in, in the days that I'm talking about, if uh, there were words in your heart that you wanted to say and you couldn't come up with the words, there was always a song that told the words that you wanted to say. So uh, the lyrics nowadays, sometimes you don't hear them, and then when you hear them, you're sorry. So I've shared with you some other lyrics. I'm a word person. I'm, I'm um, uh, aware of the power of words. You know, they say the pen is mightier than the sword. And I love words, so uh, th that's why I write. Now, I start, started out as a writer. I did not intend to be doing live TV. But if nobody else was reading my poems, I said, well, I better do it while I still while I can still talk. So uh, my latest poem, I've, I've done it for you before, but I'm so proud of it, I'm going to do it again. It's called The Big 8-0, and uh, I'll be presenting some of these poems at my book signing, and other folks will be printing, presenting some of the poems. Uh, Jesse Peck, who is the bass singer for The Spinners Now, is going to read some of Purvis's poems because my new book has some poems that Purvis wrote. So Jesse Peck is going to read some of Purvis's poems. And uh, 
I'm, I'm planning a really nice book signing. It's going to be at Northwest Activity Center, which is centrally located. So I'm hoping that, uh, hope it's, I'm calling it a meet and greet. I'm hoping to be able to meet and greet you. So I want to share one of my latest poems, which is the Big 8-0. And I'm very proud of this poem. Uh, it's kind of stating uh, where I've been and where I am now. No more rolling with the punches. Now I go with the flow. No more drama, no trauma, because I am the big 8-0. No more feuding and fighting, no stress and no mess. No more between a rock and a hard place, because I sure needed a rest. No more slipping and sliding and peeping and hiding. I've been through that before. No more pretending. No more pretending. No lying. No more midnight crying. I don't do that no more. Now, all the wrong that I wanted to do, I've already done. And most of my races have already been run. Now, I, I didn't want to do a lot of wrong, but whatever wrong I wanted to do, I, I've already done. And as far as all of my races, I've already run. The reason I know that is because I'm not running any more races. That's one of the things you get, a, you get this age. You no, know, I'm not running any more races. Like fine wine, I've mellowed with time, and a new chapter has begun. I still have things that I want to do in the time that I have left. Because I'm not ready to go. I still have time to celebrate life. And I am the big 8-0. And I want you to know that it is possible to get to the big 8-0 and uh, have your faculties. I'm not in as good a shape as I was when I was younger, but I still am in good enough shape to come out and speak to you and uh, share my poetry and try to... Uh, give a little comfort. Now, one of the, one of the main uh, things that I wanted to sh share with you is about um, not only giving comfort, but not letting anybody give you discomfort. I want to share one of my poems with you, He Who Holds the Future. When storms are raging around me and I'm drowning in quicksand and unhappy things are happening, things that I don't understand and I don't know what else to do. I'll just do what I can because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand. Now that's an old poem and that's in one of my other books, but it's still uh, relevant today. So thank you so much for tuning into A Spoonful of Comfort. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you at my meet and greet. Uh, stay tuned to WHPR. Thank you. When I was 17, I ran away from home and from everything I had ever known. I was sick and tired, living in a town filled with narrow minds and hate. They used to laugh at me, their children called